Once upon a time, in ancient Egypt, there was a pharaoh named Akhenaten. He was part of the 18th dynasty, a family that ruled during a time of peace and prosperity known as the New Kingdom. Akhenaten's reign started around 1353 BC, and he was quite an unusual pharaoh. He was tall and thin, with a narrow face, pointed jaw, and droopy eyes. His appearance in statues and relievers is so strange that scholars still can't figure it out. Some show him as slender and almost like a girl, while others make him look plump and feminine. Akhenaten was also different in his beliefs. He had a strong love for the sun, which was already an important part of Egyptian religion. They had many gods related to the sun, like Shu and Ri. But Akhenaten seemed to have a special devotion to the sun that was uncommon for his time. When Akhenaten became pharaoh, the most important god in Egypt was Amun-Ri, a combination of two gods, Amun and Ri. Amun-Ri was considered the king of all gods, not just in Egypt but in its surrounding lands as well. His temple at Karnak in Thebes was the grandest and most decorated in the entire country, and his priests were the wealthiest and most powerful people in Egypt. Akhenaten's unusual appearance and beliefs made him stand out from the other pharaohs, and his reign was a time of great change in ancient Egypt. Akhenaten had a special connection with the sun god Aten, which was different from the popular god Amunri. He believed that the Aten was the most important god in the world and that it shone its light on everyone, no matter where they were. Akhenaten felt like the Aten spoke to him and revealed its true nature. This experience changed him deeply. Because of his love for the Aten, Akhenaten made it the main god in Egypt, even above Amunri. This was a big change because usually, pharaohs would just support one god more than the others. But Akhenaten went further and said that the Aten was the only god in the universe. This made him the first monotheist in history. Akhenaten's new belief didn't happen all at once. First, he changed his name to Akhenaten I, which meant beneficial to Aten. Then, he moved the capital of Egypt to a new, empty place called Akhenaten, Aten's horizon, now known as Amarna. He built many temples for the Aten all over Egypt, but let the temples of other gods, like Amunri's temple at Karnak, fall into disrepair. At first, he didn't try to stop people from worshipping other gods, but his actions still caused a big change in ancient Egypt. After five years as pharaoh, Akhenaten became even more strict about his belief in the Aten. He made it illegal to worship any other god in Egypt. He closed all the temples except for those of the Aten and stopped the priests from working. Soldiers went all over Egypt, destroying statues and pictures of other gods. This caused a lot of anger and resentment among the people. When Akhenaten died, his religion didn't last long. People considered his monotheism a bad thing that was forced upon them. They destroyed the temples of the Aten, made new statues of Amunri, and tried to forget about Akhenaten. His son, Tutankhaten, changed his name to Tutankhamun to show he didn't want to remember his father's religion. In the end, Akhenaten's attempt at monotheism was forgotten and buried in Egypt's history. Around 1100 BC, monotheism came back with the teachings of Zarathustra, also known as Zoroaster, from Iran. He was born into an Aryan tribe that had its own social classes, including warriors, farmers, herders, and priests called the Magi. Zoroaster's teachings would have a big impact on the world's religious history. In ancient Iran, the gods were not based on natural elements but on abstract ideas like truth, virtue, and justice. These gods had personalities and looks that developed over time, like making a pearl. Zarathustra, also known as Zoroaster, was part of the priestly class in Iran. He spent his childhood learning sacred hymns and rituals. At 15, he became a fully initiated priest. But at 20, he left his priestly duties to search for a deeper understanding of the gods. One day, while attending a festival near the Savalan Mountains, Zarathustra saw a bright light and had a vision. He met a god that wasn't part of any known pantheon. This god told him that it was the only god in the universe, the one who created everything. This experience led Zarathustra to found a new religion called Zoroastrianism. 
when Zarathustra met the god Ahura Mazda, it was a special moment in religious history. Ahura Mazda was not connected to a specific tribe or place and was the only god. It had no name but could be known through six divine qualities, wisdom, truth, power, love, unity, and immortality. These qualities were like the god's reflection in the world. Zarathustra shared his experience with others and became the first prophet in history. But at first, people didn't want to believe in his monotheistic message. They were used to their tribal gods and didn't understand how one god could be the source of both good and evil. Zarathustra came up with an idea to explain this. He said that evil wasn't created by a separate force but was just the opposite of good. Good came from Ahura Mazda, but it needed evil to exist. He called the good spirit Spentamanu and the evil spirit Ingramanu, the twin children of Mazda. This way, Zarathustra kept his monotheistic belief and added a dualistic idea about good and evil. Zarathustra's religion, Zoroastrianism, didn't become popular among his people and faded away after his death. But later, it was adopted by the Achaemenid Empire, which changed some parts of the belief. The six divine qualities of Ahura Mazda became six divine beings, and the two spirits became two gods, Ormazd, the good god, and Ahriman, the evil god. This changed Zarathustra's monotheism into Zoroastrian dualism, where there were two gods fighting for people's souls. Monotheism, the belief in one god, has only existed for a short time compared to other religious beliefs. It's not that it didn't appear in history, like with Akhenaten and Zarathustra, but it was often rejected or denied. One reason for this is that monotheism is exclusive, meaning it says that only one god is true, and all others are false. This can lead to conflicts, and the need for force to change people's beliefs. Akhenaten went further than just making his god the only one to worship. He removed the word gods from the Egyptian language, showing that there was only one true way to think about the universe. Zarathustra didn't have the power to force people to believe in his god, but he said that Ahura Mazda was the source of human morality. He believed that this god would judge people after they died based on their actions. This idea of heaven and hell was new and didn't exist before in human spirituality. Most people thought that the afterlife was like the living world, but Zarathustra said that how you behaved on earth would affect your afterlife. The main reason monotheism didn't become popular for a long time is because it conflicts with our natural desire to see the divine as human-like. In polytheistic religions, we can give each god human qualities, like love, war, or parenting. But in monotheism, there's only one god, and it's hard for us to fully humanize it. This makes it harder for people to accept the idea of one god. The idea of one god with all human qualities was hard for ancient people to understand. They liked having gods with specific qualities, like mother or father gods, or gods of light and darkness. Akhenaten tried to say that all other gods were just reflections of his god, but people didn't like this explanation. Zarathustra came up with a different idea, turning some gods into angels, good qualities, and others into demons, bad qualities. But this still didn't satisfy people. Later, the Magi brought back most of the old Iranian gods into their version of Zoroastrianism. What people seemed to accept was the idea of one powerful god who was the main deity, with other gods below him. This is called henotheism, and it became popular in many civilizations. This belief comes from our natural desire to see the divine as human-like, making the world of gods a reflection of our own. As our societies change, so do the gods' heavenly institutions. As our societies changed, so did our beliefs about the gods. When we were hunter-gatherers, we imagined a world with lots of tame animals, ruled by the lord of beasts. As we settled down and farmed, we saw Mother Earth as the main god of fertility. When city-states formed, each had its own god, often in conflict with others. When big empires came, gods were arranged in hierarchies like the political order. This process, called politicomorphism, means that gods are shaped by the way people organize their societies. It often leads to henotheism, 
where one powerful god is the main deity, with others below him. In ancient Mesopotamia, early civilization had a democratic system where the king didn't have complete power. This was reflected in their beliefs about the gods, who also had a democratic assembly to discuss and decide things. No single god had absolute authority. In ancient Mesopotamia, things changed when big empires and powerful kings emerged. City-states were often at war, and overpopulation made things worse. Some rulers wanted complete control to protect their people and fight enemies. This led to a centralized political system and a new idea of kingship. This new political reality was reflected in the stories about the gods. In the Enuma Elish, a Babylonian epic, the god Marduk became very important. He promised to save the gods from a sea monster, but only if they made him the king of the gods with absolute authority. The gods agreed, and Marduk defeated the monster. This story shows how the idea of one powerful god as the ruler of all gods became popular in Mesopotamia. In different parts of Mesopotamia, the same idea of one powerful god as the ruler of all gods developed. In the Babylonian epic Enuma Elish, Marduk became the king of the gods. In Assyria, it was Ashur, and in Isin, it was An. As earthly politics changed, so did the beliefs about the gods. This idea of a high god who rules over all others is called henotheism. As more power is given to one person on earth, more power is given to one god in heaven. But as a god becomes more powerful and takes on the qualities of other gods, there are contradictions and inconsistencies in its character. This is why henotheism doesn't usually lead to monotheism, where there is only one god with all the qualities. To solve the problem of contradictions in a high god's character, some people tried to remove human qualities from the divine. Akhenaten and Zarathustra did this, presenting their gods as pure spirits without human features. However, this made it difficult for people to connect with the god, as they couldn't relate to something without human needs or emotions. Akhenaten's attempt at monotheism failed because people had a hard time imagining a god without any human qualities. It required a big cognitive effort, or a major spiritual crisis for people to accept such a god. This is what happened to the Israelites, who created the first successful monotheistic religion.